Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I have kind of like a draw with me while I talk about my entire art journey. It's a long one, um, considering like in the title I said I am 37 years old and I've only just decided this year that I'm going to be an artist for the rest of my life. <laughs> I finally know what I want to do when I grow up. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest, so sit back, enjoy, draw along with me, or just listen to my story, and let's just get into it. So just very quickly about this sketch, Pedro Pascal, I mean, everyone loves this guy, right? I mean, I just can't imagine anyone not liking him, he's just so disgustingly likeable, it's just not fair, you know, it's so unfair that he's just so nice, he just seems like such a genuine lovely person, but his Met Gala look was just chef's kiss, unbelievable, and I just cannot get over his leg, it's like the Angelina Jolie leg back in, I don't know how long ago it was, 10 years ago, and it went absolutely viral, and all the, the leg memes, it was so funny, but as soon as I saw his leg, I was just, I have to draw him, <laughs> Anyway, let's get into my art journey. I don't really remember much of my childhood and drawing, but I do know that I used to, when I did draw, I would copy like Disney princesses, I would draw them quite a bit, and that hasn't really changed even as an adult. I draw Disney princesses still, so obviously those movies had a huge impact on my life, but I do remember that, and this has carried over, that I wasn't extremely imaginative or creative that way, like I couldn't just draw something from my imagination, and it's actually still the same, I really really struggle to just conjure something out of my head, and I don't know why, I think there's a name for it as well, like that you just cannot, you need a, like a reference, and you need something in front of you to draw, I don't think I've even kept anything from back then, or my parents haven't kept anything, so <laughs> I can't even show you what kind of art I was doing, which is a pity, and it was only really when I went to my very first secondary school, and there was this teacher, and she was like this formidable lady, she was so scary, like you know you get those certain teachers that you just know you don't mess around, you just do as you're told and hopefully they don't look in your direction. <laughs> she was the most passionate teacher about their subject that I had ever met and she basically taught us all of the fundamentals of drawing and I mean really back to basic stuff like shapes and shading and we do the shading grids and I think my mind was really just kind of blown away by the fact that I realised the opportunities and the potentials to how you could actually create art if you knew how to do it properly. So I remember just I loved doing her classes and I loved being there and it's really when I started to get really interested in art and thinking I should do this more often in my spare time. So I was only maybe 12 or 13 when that happened and unfortunately I left that school because we moved back to Ireland and I had to go to a different school. I obviously took up art in my secondary school here and it just wasn't the same for me. Um, obviously it wasn't the same teacher so I kind of lost my interest again which is sad and you know at that age 14 I kind of needed someone to help me and encourage me and point me in the right direction and I didn't really get that so I lost interest again and I'm sure you can see a pattern emerging here <laughs> where I'm interested I lose it again I'm interested I lose it again and I feel like this is something that's just a thing in my life that this is my personality type that I get invested in things very quickly and I become obsessive and then just as quickly I can lose interest again I guess I'm flighty I don't know <laughs> I wrestled with the idea that I was going to do art, I was going to go to do like maybe an illustration type course, um, there wasn't too many of those courses back then, I, what year was it? It would have been 2002, 2003 where I would have had to make this decision and I was only 16, 17 years old where I had to make this serious life decision about well this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life and a lot of importance was put on that like this has to be the right decision you know once you do this there's no going back like there's a lot of fear back then like if you don't go to college you're not going to get a good job i was too scared 
to kind of go with my gut feeling. And my gut feeling was you should do art because you do enjoy it, even though you keep changing your mind, but <laughs> you do ultimately enjoy it and you're good at it. You feel like you're good at it and you can get better. So I ended up just picking um, a science course and I completely stopped drawing during those years because, I mean, there's more important things going on when you're in university and college, right? You know, you just don't have time for anything else. You've got your friends going out and you've got the studying and, you know, it's my first time living away from home. So it was a big change for me and it was very lazy in college. I was so lazy. I didn't look after myself properly. I put on a lot of weight because I wasn't feeding myself properly and... Don't get me wrong, I loved college and for the most part, but I definitely didn't look after myself physically or mentally. So I stopped doing a lot of things that I really enjoyed doing. I didn't draw for all of that time and I'm sad about it. I'm sad about it now because I feel like that was the era when deviant art really, really started kicking off. If I'd known about it, then maybe I would have been brave enough to do the art course. I would have been brave enough to study art. You know, everything happens for a reason and that's what I like to think anyway. So no art during my late teens to early 20s. I couldn't get a job anywhere in science so I decided to move to Australia. I got my first science job there. I was working for a agricultural company in a lab and I was working maybe at least 12 hours every single day and that's my fault because I just threw myself you know kind of deep into the whole well I have to work, I have to make money. I didn't draw because I, I didn't have time then. There was no excuses. I was putting myself under an enormous amount of stress and pressure. I ended up making myself very very unwell and it was only really coming towards the end of that job where I knew it was time to quit that I started drawing again. I had bought the original bamboo tablet. This was my first introduction to digital art because I remember seeing the tablet in the shop and I think it had somebody's art on the front. Maybe it was Art Jam or Sakimi Chan. It was one of those artists and I thought that looks incredible like somebody actually made art with this. So I remember buying the tablet and I was so scared by it. I remember hooking it up and I hadn't a clue what to do obviously. I just got immediately scared and I was like I can't do this and my hand-eye coordination is not good enough for this. I can't do it but I didn't give up on the art at least so I started drawing again and I, I started doing portraits and teaching myself how to draw realistically. And I know the reason for this is, as I was saying previously, I don't have that imagination, like the creativity does not flow through me. <laughs> I did enjoy drawing the portraits and I felt like my technical skill with replicating what I could see was getting pretty good. And I was getting to the point where I wanted to try something new, but because I didn't know the fundamentals, anytime I tried something new, it looked dreadful, obviously. <laughs> I'm getting to the deviant art era here, where you can see some of that stuff where I started out. I was experimenting with a lot of different styles because I didn't have my own style obviously because well I hadn't practiced enough and it was because I was doing re realism so I didn't have my own style and I didn't even know what style I would naturally have so I think I just tried to replicate lots of other artists styles and like I said I was heavily inspired and influenced by Art Jam and Sakimi Chan. That was really when I started getting into digital art and I taught myself digital art through YouTube because I couldn't really afford to pay for courses and I wasn't entirely sure if digital art was something that I would continue with considering how quickly I was scared by it. So I went to YouTube and I just devoured anything I could on Photoshop and how to use it as a drawing program and I definitely learned so much is probably the most I have ever learned for my art. I had so much time because I actually ended up quitting my job and that's what I would do. I would just draw every day. I would learn the basics of Photoshop and that's what I did for about a year. My love for learning how to do digital art did not stop. In fact, I think I became more obsessed and I think that's when I saw my most dramatic improvements when it came to digital art and I was really really kind of going all out with these paintings like I was doing really detailed stuff stuff that I, I had no right to do <laughs> you know I still hadn't done any basics yet I'm impatient that's the kind of person I am I'm so impatient and I wanted to do these epic 
looking illustrations that I had seen all these other artists do. Some of them look pretty okay, they still hold up I think when I compare it to my level of skill at that time, so I'm still quite proud of them. Yeah, so that's what I was doing and that was around 2014 where I was doing all this kind of work. 2015 came and I had my first child and I thought maybe that would hinder my love of art, but thankfully I didn't. That's when I started my Instagram account. It was a couple of months after my son was born, so I think it was the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. It was a very slow growing account right at the very beginning, but then I started doing kind of like cutesy Disney art. I started drawing Disney princesses and I think those are some of the first videos on my YouTube are the speed paints of basically screen cap redraws, you know, kind of in my style, but it's essentially, it looks almost the same as the princess as she is. And I think I started getting a bit more popular from that. I mean, back then you could never go wrong with fan art. They would always get shared and you definitely get some followers from that. 2016 was kind of the year where things started to blow up a little because I did the Disney Kids series and I said I would talk about this and the other things that blew up my Instagram because even though they did have a positive impact on me, there was quite a huge negative impact too. I think it went to my head a little bit that I, you know, I had such a big following very quickly and it kind of got to my head that okay I can't stop now because now I have people expecting this from me and if I stop and I lose the following then I'm going to be pointless as an artist and I don't know I mean I'm an adult at this stage I'm in my thought like early 30s and I had this mindset and I was just completely consumed with the fact that I had to increase my following or at least maintain it because all these people were looking at me now and that's how I saw it which was so unhealthy and I ended up stopping for about six months. I didn't draw at all. I just, I think my love for it had just completely disappeared because I was putting myself under so much pressure. So I took a pretty long break and when I came back, I redrew those Disney princesses that I had done the previous year, but in my new art style. And my art style kept changing because I'm always influenced by something. So I remember doing the comparison side by side, you know, 2016 versus 2017 and kind of playing to that Instagram hype of which is better, you decide, which one do you pick, one or two? And I got a lot of attention and it was another thing that went kind of semi-viral, widely shared on Instagram. This was when I really kind of became acquainted with internet hate. (laughs) As you can imagine, you really open yourself up when you ask people to choose something that they think is better. And the amount of comments that I would get, people saying, oh, your old one was better, go back to your old style, like your new style is awful, and I'm being really polite here. There were some very not so nice comments that I wouldn't say out loud here. And then there would be fighting amongst my comments, you know. I kept going because I thought, well, look, people can say what they want. They are inadvertently promoting my page, they're commenting, they're engaging, this is a good thing. And I thought it didn't really bother me that much, so I kept going, I would do each princess, the redraw, and I was just so exhausted of the negativity that was on my page. I just, I was so tired of it. So I decided to just stop drawing that kind of stuff. And this was the time when I was working, like I had my second kid as well, and I was working also full time. So I was trying to do all this work as well as do my full time job. My job was okay, but eventually I ended up quitting that particular job. I was in it for three and a half years. I just had this horrible feeling every time I I went in there and I knew it was because I wanted to focus more on my art but I also had this horrible feeling that I can't sustain myself doing this as a living and I kind of bounced around other jobs like science related jobs in the meantime and I didn't like them I'd quit I'd get new one I didn't like it I'd quit and I thought it was maybe the jobs but Obviously now when I look back, I realise it was just me knowing that this was not what I wanted to do with my life. I'm in my mid-30s and I cannot settle down in a job anymore and there's a reason for that. And it was really recognising that reason is what I needed. I I needed to understand that it's you. (laughs) It's you. You're the problem because you're not doing what you want to do. 
It took me until the end of last year to understand that life goes by so quickly, like my children are growing up and I don't want them to be around somebody who's unhappy with their life in terms of what they're doing with their life because it does manifest in you as a person and that energy does go out and I realized that I could see that I was not showing happiness in my everyday life around the people that I loved. I ended up quitting science for good in December, just gone, and I'm honestly much happier now, and I think I'm doing the kind of art that I want to do now, but I also have a lot more that I need to learn to become the artist that I want to be, and it's still one of those things where I'm not entirely sure who I want to be as an artist, or how I want to make money as an artist, but I do know that this is what I want to do. So I finally got there in the end, you know, it only took me 37 years to realize what it is I actually want to do with my life but it's better than going through life doing all the things you don't want to do end up being I don't know 70 80 years old and realizing wow if only I had when I was in my late 30s just done what I wanted to do I told myself this year that no matter what I set my mind to that I'm going to make it it's going to happen for me because I'm going to put in the hard work that I didn't do all those years ago I'm going to do that now and I'm just going to really invest in me from now on rather than investing in all these other things that didn't matter to me all my life. You know, those careers, they, I was investing my time in them. Yes, I'm getting paid as compensation, but what am I really investing into? I was only investing into my unhappiness. So yeah, that's why I'm doing this Pedro Pascal <laughs> sketch, because you know what? It makes me happy. And just look at that leg. I mean, come on. If that doesn't make you happy, then what's wrong with you? <laughs> So that's basically a kind of quick rundown of my decisions as an artist, you know, where they've led me, where they've not led me, and my plans for the future. I hope you guys found some sort of, I don't know, like you can relate to this maybe if, if you're a similar age or maybe even older, maybe you can relate to this, or maybe if you're a lot younger than me and if you're just starting your journey, hopefully this shows you that it's never too late to make the changes that you need if you feel like you haven't made the right choices in your life because I think it's worse if you just carry on doing the things that you don't want to do and giving up on what is essentially your dream. It's never too late to do that. And so I hope this is encouraging for anyone who might feel that way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed this drawing. If you haven't enjoyed this drawing, then I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> Drop me a like and a comment, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.